Senator Martin, we appreciate your good work on the Judiciary Committee and these issues that uh, impact in our communities. And I am Senator Thomas Alexander from uh, the Oconee and Pickens uh, County, Senate District Number One. And uh, we appreciate each and every person that's here today because I think it demonstrates the importance as we kick off Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I couldn't help but think on my way over from Oconee today, the dreariness and the messiness of this day, but you know, things will get better for us when the rain stops and the clouds go and there's sunshine. But there are a lot of folks today that are facing things in their lives that won't get better because of the change in the weather. It's what they have endured through domestic violence. We've had cases, and I, I commend the law enforcement, I commend the media for making us more aware of those domestic violence cases in our community so that we can come together as a community to try to address these. And there are steps, and, and that's what I want to focus on today is that some of the information that's being provided by the support groups uh, that are here and the, and, the, and the different folks that have come together. Isn't that a great witness of us joining forces together to combat this situation? And there are five community steps toward prevention of relationship and family violence. There's modeling healthy relationship behaviors at home. Promoting education and awareness of healthy relationship behaviors. Providing opportunities for building self-esteem, independence, and empowerment. Involving men in the movement for healthy relationships and supporting healthy masculinity. And offering concrete intervention, resources, and support for victims. Focusing first on the first step, modeling healthy relationship behaviors at home. You know, I can't help but think back to the time that I was in school, that probably a lot of my classmates, the happiest and best part of their life was a time that they spent at school away from their family environment. And I think that's the reason it's, it's important to emphasize that witnessing violence between one's parents or caretakers is the strongest risk factor for transmitting violent behavior from one generation to the next. Children who grow up in homes that are free from physical, sexual, and emotional violence are significantly less likely to perpetrate violence or to become victims of violence in their adolescence and adult intimate partners relationships. And that leads us to the second step, promoting education and awareness of healthy relationship behaviors. And this, this statistic just blows me away. Currently, one out of three teenagers will experience dating violence. And two-thirds of those will not even report that abuse to anyone. To end relationship violence, teens and adults must learn the basic characteristics of a healthy relationship, such as respect, trust, and honest communication, while also being aware of the warning signs of relationship abuse. And then it brings us to step number three, providing opportunities for building self-esteem independence and empowerment. Low self-esteem and dependency are common risk factors that contribute to abuse in relationships. Individuals who feel confident in themselves and their skills will feel empowered to gain and maintain lifelong stability and independence. Thus, they are avoiding unhealthy relationships that result in power intimidation, and control. Step number four, involving men in the movement for healthy relationships and supporting healthy masculinity. You know, the goal that's already been established here today and mentioned, and it should be our goal, is to involve all the people, including men and boys in an effort devoted to creating a future without violence 
involve in manning the effort to end relationship abuse and supporting a healthy understanding of masculinity means supporting communities that are free from harassment and domestic violence and lives that are better for women, children, and men. And finally, that fifth step, offering concrete intervention, resources, and support for victims. Domestic violence is not simply a personal or a family issue. It is indeed a community issue. Community members must feel empowered to safely intervene when witnessing violence by contacting local law enforcement that we've already heard from today and referring victims of abuse to safe and confidential resources for emergency shelter, counseling, case management, legal advocacy, and education. Building community awareness of the United Way's 211 program, the Mental Health America's Crisis Line, Safe Harbor's Crisis Line, <coughs> and other emergency resources is essential in order to connect individuals and families with the services that they need. We can pass, as mentioned, we can pass all the laws, we can provide the funding. But it's important for us to take it upon ourselves as individual members of our community to do what we need to do to help one another. I think if we were in that situation, we would be wanting someone else to help us. So let us make sure that we do what we need to do to make this a better community and a better state for all of our citizens to live in. It is important for us to kick off this month of October with domestic violence awareness so that a better days brighter days, sunnier days, will be there for all of our citizens. Thank you.